this episode of Modern Greaser, we've got springs sponsored by none other than Eaton Springs right out of downtown Detroit, Michigan. And they are the proper spring rate for this come and swap diesel behind me. So we did a little math and it turns out that the Allison AT542 and the 12 valve Cummins has a total combined weight of 1,465 pounds. The stock weight was 711. Now that's including the front end. So um, these springs that I actually got from Eaton are 48% stronger than the stock spring per spring. So we should be good to go on that. These are the coil springs. Now, this truck sits absolutely perfect in terms of this ride height. The only issue is, is that the springs bottom out really, really hard. I'd like to go full more, how are you freaking up? Oh my gosh, that was a dump, huh? So the great thing about this C10, it has tangential coil springs, which means that this end of the coil is all the same. So I could come down here and cut it an inch. I can come down here and cut it two inches. Eaton also sent over some rubber isolators that we're gonna install. Okay, so now that I have my shirt on backwards and you can clearly see the providers of my springs. So why should you get your next set of springs from Eaton Detroit Springs? Well, not only are your parts made here in the good old USA, Eaton Detroit Springs has been around since 1937 and they have their hands on over 24,000 original manufactured spring blueprints. They also have their very own YouTube channel that's action packed full of helpful videos so make sure you get over there and subscribe to them. And if you're like me and you have a bizarre application like the diesel swap, they're just a phone call away. I'm also going to take a tape measure and try to get a baseline of what the truck is. I just crawled underneath the truck and the oil pan plug is about two and three eighths of an inch off of the ground. I have no clue how I've been driving this thing for over a year and never bottomed out or hit anything. So if you see me changing outfits and go through wardrobe changes all the time, it's not because I'm a fancy dresser, it's because I have a five month old and I'm inside, outside, inside, outside, and I can't pick them up with car stuff. So, you know, you gotta use what time you have. So, the heck with continuity. So there's a ton of videos out there about putting coil springs on cars. The reason that I'm doing this video is because that spring up there is engineered to hold the 1,465 or 85 pounds, whatever it is, that this transmission and engine combo consists of. It's great to have companies out there like Eaton Spring that are making these for you guys. So if you have a custom application like this, maybe you put a big block in it and you just have a six cylinder, go check these guys out and get your springs from them. The only sad part about doing my coil springs is I'm gonna lose my awesome coil spring hood stack. So on the C10, all we're gonna do is we're gonna detach the shock. This here is your spindle. This is our upper ball joint. And there's a cotter pin here. We're gonna pull it out, loosen that castle nut, and be all set. There's the cotter pin, be sure to discard that. Kind of makes you feel like a dentist pulling that out of there. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna push up on this lower control arm with our jack, take tension off this nut. We're gonna loosen it down and then release the tension from the jacks. Okay, so now there's a gap between the top of my spindle and that castle nut. I'll lower down my jack. If it doesn't break free, I'll tap with a hammer, break it free. So of all things, I use a little bit of a pry bar to just kind of force it down. All we're gonna do now, raise the jack up a hair to relieve pressure off of that castle nut. Take that nut off and then slowly release pressure. Pull that old ratchet spring out of there. Okay, we had the right tension and it came off by hand, nice and easy. So I'm gonna slowly lower this so we can get our spring out. There's the brake line you gotta be cautious about. That is our spring. So you can see that weight, whoop. It's made it really, really, really bad on. Okay, there's our old spring versus our new spring. Judging by how close these two are together here, I'm sure somebody heated it up to lower it down because this thing was about as low as you could go. So, so you never want to heat your springs because that ruins the tensile strength. These also have isolators that will go on here and give us a little shock absorption between the control arm and the spring. Hello. 
So the install is basically the same thing. Stick it on in there, put it in, tighten your nut, and we're ready to drive this thing. Now some vehicles are gonna have a spot in the control arm where the part of the spring sits. So make sure you have that lined up properly. So here in Florida, you change your outfit like eight times a day if you're working outside, even in October. This truck is way up here now by my nipple, much taller. I've got about 16 inches off the ground. Obviously it's in a different spot, but it looks like a gasser. I can't wait to get out in the street for you to see how much higher it is in the front. And then we're gonna work on bringing it down lower. So it's really weird for me to see this truck sitting up so high, but that's gonna end when I get the spindle drop and probably end up cutting these springs a little. So it's a high riser, but man, it rides great. It's like a brand new car. I was hitting huge bumps and it's just gliding like a Cadillac. So mission accomplished. Now it's time to get her low. So now that you see that the diesel swap sits up too high, we are gonna fix that. Summit Racing hooked us up with a CPP two and a half inch lowering spindle and that's gonna bring the front end down another two and a half inches. So we're gonna put this on we're gonna do a whole entire disc brake conversion. That's gonna be an upcoming episode and we'll see what the truck sits and looks like. And if it sits too high, we're gonna be pulling these same exact coil springs that you saw in this episode out, taking an inch off and maybe just a little off the top, maybe going down an inch and a half, we'll see. So we might actually end up cutting springs. I have a feeling we're gonna be cutting springs. I don't think two and a half inches is gonna do it, but this is gonna go in there next. And then we're gonna be doing the whole disc brake conversion. And while we're in there, not just a disc brake conversion, there's all kinds of things that were needing attention on this vehicle. Like the shocks. Shocks aren't supposed to stay together like that, are they? I actually have to pull this one apart. <sighs> it's like a Stretch Armstrong action. I think I'm gonna give this to my son for his Christmas present. Stretch Armstrong. <sighs> anyway, so if your shock is staying in the same place, it's time to replace those. That's the easiest thing you could possibly do. Take a look at that tie rod. That thing is nasty. It's throwing on some new tie rods. These are going in the garbage, but keep them. You wanna know what measurements these are so you can make it to the alignment shop. We're also doing the upper and lower control arm seals, bushings. I'm not sure what you called these back in 63, but they're this big weird caps. And these big metal caps actually get worn out. And there's like a little rubber seal that keeps the grease from going out. These are gonna be delivered soon and we're going to be installing these on our control arms all these things are going to be in the upcoming video of this truck before we get into cutting the coil spring everybody's favorite treat is a ball joint and during the whole process of this filming i actually grew a mustache i don't know how it happened i just came in from the garage one night and there it was apparently if you're doing a spring swap on your truck a mustache just grows out of nowhere and i'm okay with that these are the upper control arm bushings, arms, whatever you want to call them. These, there's a lot of slack. There's a lot of slop in that there. So these are going bye bye and we're getting new ones of these. And last but not least, you ever have one of these lines break on a car while you're driving? Well, I did on my 66 Dodge and it doesn't stop. So it's good to get a dual master cylinder so it actually stops if you have an emergency. So bye. And what's even cooler is this truck is getting a dual master cylinder with a brake booster. Now do Diesels create vacuum? No, they don't because vacuum is created by the Venturi on your carburetors. Do diesels have carburetors? Heck no. Diesels don't have carburetors, they don't have distributors, they don't have spark plugs, they don't have spark plug wires, they're so awesome. So that's what you need, no coils. Did I ever say that I'm in love with diesels? We even painted the control arms, oh, but didn't really do a good job prepping them. I mean, who sees these, especially on this old junk of a truck? So be sure to tune in to see the new ride height of the diesel swap after we do the disc brake conversion. It's actually gonna stop, and then we're gonna see if we need to cut these springs or not. Cut it out. Sorry, Dave Coulier, but I just stole that. So you wanna cut the springs on your truck or car? Well, can you? Is it gonna ruin it? 
Well, the answer is yes and the answer is no. It depends on what type of springs you have. And don't take it from me, I'm not the expert. But the guys over at Eaton Detroit Springs are. So get on over and check out Eaton Detroit Springs on their website. They're gonna tell you exactly which springs you can cut and which springs you can't cut. There are a few different types. Tangential springs, say it with me now. Tangential, that's what you want. Those are cuttable. Anyways, thank you for tuning in to yet another episode of Modern Greaser. Make sure you hit that like button. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. If you hated this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel. This job is so fast and so easy. I wore this white shirt and I only got this one speck of mustard on here while I ate my lunch. Black mustard, I swear it's not grease. <laughs>